Hey guys, what's up? So, in the previous video that I did to this one, I installed Raspbian uh, OS on a La Potato from Libre Computer. We're going to follow that up now, and we're going to install Clipper on it in this video. So this video is going to kind of walk you through how to get Clipper installed on the La Potato. The process is very similar to stuff I've, or some other videos I've put out, but might as well do one specific to the La Potato, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Give me just a minute while we flip screens here real quick and get ready to do that. All right, guys. So here's the La Potato. So if you missed that video and you're just coming in for the Clipper install portion of it, here's the La Potato over on Libre.computer. You can go ahead and download Putty because we're going to need Putty. So you want to go to uh, it's putty.org. And then when you click the link, it'll take you over here to this website. Um, you'll want to select the version of Putty for your Windows install. If you're using Mac or Linux, you can just use the terminal to get into or to SSH in. And uh, then again, we're going to want to go to, uh, I'm using what's called the Clipper Install and Upgrade Helper. And uh, we're going to go ahead and follow the instructions here. So the first thing we want to do is bring up Putty. And we want to log into our device, which we've already done. And uh, once we do that, then we're going to go ahead and scroll down the page here. Let me click on this guy. We'll scroll down, and here is the Clipper install and upgrade helper. This is the instructions. First thing you want to do is make sure that Git is installed. Usually by default it is, but we're going to go ahead and copy this anyway. Right-click and paste that in there and hit Enter. And uh, it's going to go through and tell us that Git is already installed with the newest version, so that part's done. Then we want to do a quick CD tilde, as it says here, or a little TD, uh, sorry, CD squiggly line. It's called a tilde. Make sure we're in the home directory, which we were. Now we're going to do a git clone, and we're going to copy this git here. Uh, we want to clone this, this directory onto the computer, or onto the potato. So there we go. goes pretty fast. And then now we're going to get into the Clipper install and upgrade helper portion of this. Uh, Right click, paste that in, and we hit enter. And uh, there we go. We see that we have nothing installed. So obviously we want number one for install. And then the first thing you need to do is install Clipper. So we hit one and hit enter. It's gonna come up and I'm gonna select two here. Uh, Python three, as I've said in several videos in the past, Python three has pretty much become the standard. So go ahead and click on number two and hit enter. It's going to ask us how many instances we want. I'm only installing one because I only plan to use this on one printer. So we'll go ahead and leave the number one in there and hit enter. And at this part here, it's going to download and install a bunch of stuff. This part's going to take a while. So I'm going to pause it here. It'll be a second for you guys. It'll be a while for me. So let me pause this. As things come up, I will uh, pop back in and tell you what to do along the way. All right, guys, you're going to get to this point here where it's going to ask to add to the TTY group. Uh, the current user in, is not in the TTY group, and it's just asking you to add them in. So add Dan to the group now. We're going to hit Y, or you can just hit Enter because the Y is capital, so that is the default option. Y. Oh, I guess it helps if I actually click on the screen. Sorry, guys, but Y and hit Enter. <laughs> this part goes pretty quick. Once that's done, next step is we need to install Moonraker. So we hit 2 and we hit enter. It does see that Clipper is installed and it is asking if we want to install Moonraker. Again, the Y is capitalized, so that is the default option, but I always like to just hit Y and hit enter. Now from here, it's gathering a list of independencies that it's finding as, uh, as well as the dependencies that it's going to need to install. It's going to go through now and configure everything to work with those dependencies and get what's missing. This part can take a little while uh, and actually does take a little while. So again, kick back, relax, have yourself a drink while you're waiting and uh, we'll be back in just a second for you guys. All right, guys, once Moonraker is done, you're going to go ahead on to your next one, which is going to be your web interface. You have two options from Clipper. You've got Mainsail and Fluid. I personally like Mainsail, so that's what I install on all my devices. You can choose whichever one you would like at this point, and if you're not sure, you can install one, try it, and if you don't like it, you can install the other one. There's also a third option there, the third-party web interface, which is Octoprint. And uh, if you're familiar with Octoprint, that might be the way you want to go. Uh, that way it's something familiar to you. But again, I do like mainsail, so I'm going to select three and hit enter. 
and now it's going to go through the process of installing mainsail. This does take a little while as well, so we'll go ahead and pause this. There's going to be another section that's going to pop up along the way that's going to ask about installing the macros. So when we get to that part, I'll come back. All right, guy, here, guys, here's that section I was telling you about where it asks you about the uh, macros. Again, by default, we're going to go ahead and tell it yes, uh, or it'll tell you by default why or yes for install. I'm going to hit Y because I just like to. And you hit enter. And now it's going to go through and put all the macros in place. And that only takes a second. Uh, now at this point, if there was anything else you wanted to install, there are some other options in there. The webcam streamer, which is the MJPEG streamer. You can install that if you wanted to stream the webcam out to other devices. Um, Obiku or Obiko uh, is on here as well. So if you're going to be using that service or you want to use that service, you can. They do have a Telegram bot that you can install, which will basically use Telegram to send you alerts on the printer when it's doing things, what's going on, if there's errors and things like that, you can get alerts or messages on that. They got pretty G code, which just shows you a prettier version of your G code uh, files. And then of course, Clipper screen, which Clipper screen I installed in a previous video on another device. Um, Clipper screen is nice if you have a, a screen to connect to this. Right now I do not. And the nice part about having this installed is you can come back to this at any point and uninstall, reinstall, uh, do all of that stuff from within this interface. So that's why I like using this. But we are done at this point with that. So we'll go ahead and hit bat, B for back. And then we're going to go ahead and hit Q for quit. And then there we go. We're back at the main screen. Now to test and make sure that it is working, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and click on a web browser here. We're going to type 192.168.1.163 and hit enter. And this should bring up our web interface, which it does. And right now we're getting an error message because we don't have a config file set up. We don't have this connected to a printer. We don't have any of that, but we can see that the web interface is working. Everything is up and running and we are able to gain access to everything Clipper related. So here's where our Clipper, or our printer config file is. This would be where we would go in and make those changes. Uh, we have our Moonraker and our main sale. And as we do other things, those things would kind of build up and populate in here. We would copy and upload files into this area here. Uh, you can see a history, which has nothing. There's the standard G code viewer, which we don't have a G code in here. So there's nothing to see G code files. This is where all your files would be stored. Console is where you would see just basically the breakdown of all the, the things that are happening on the printer. They would show up in here and under the standard dashboard, you would have the console small, and then there would be other things that'll start to populate this area. And, um, uh, as we take this over to the next step, which I'm going to jump back over here real quick, guys. But when we get to the next step, which will be connecting this to a printer, once we have a printer to connect it to, uh, we will go through the process showing you guys uh, more about uh, the main sale OS interface and uh, doing doing some custom stuff with Clipper. So please come back, check again. I'm going to be putting out some videos periodically over the next few weeks of different things I'm working on. Hopefully this becomes a schedule where I can start putting together some videos and getting them all scheduled out and having them all release. So I do want to thank you guys for your time. I do want to say my usual spiel, which is stay out of trouble, stay out of jail and happy 3D printing. Till the next one. Bye guys.